I call one number 15, a video that is describing his new device and it is translated by this guy here, it's Wesley, that's me. Akua amazed us some time ago when he first presented over one kilowatt of power um, generator that is not using any power supply whatsoever. It requires only one impulse to start up. After the number of videos, he switched of a sudden to another device, and that is Akua's TPU and then Vietnamese Fanaric, which would be the flashlight that is presented in here. It's supposed to work forever and doesn't use any power supply at all. <laughs> We are right now outside, and this is our Gishif Anarik, which is a um, flashlight for whatever. He's using right now 9 volt battery to activate that device for only a short period of time, mm -hmm. and now it's working without power supply at all. He's showing that he's able to move it around outside and no wires are connected. So at first what I was thinking is uh, that uh, it might be somewhere the generator that is uh, giving uh, electromagnetic wave that is then converted in here uh, to usable signal that is powering the LEDs. Uh, that LEDs I assume are approximately 3 watts at max 10 watts. So is it is like we have He's adjusting the frequency right now, and he says, before I will lose the power. Okay, he's trying right now to power it up again. So the device contains a generator that they need certain voltage to generate the impulses. So when he adjusts potentiometer, he lost synchronization, and that's why the device stopped working. Now he's presenting a switch. That switch is able to switch off the device. So you could see that there are no hidden batteries. He lift up ferrite transformer. Later on, we're going to find out that he made a little trick with ferrite, and there is a small piece of paper that he put in between two halves, which is exactly what we did in Lithuania experiment in, when I was with Aida Sarunas in Lithuania. There is interrupting magnetic flux to the point of transition to the flyback mode so that what you see in here is actually a flyback now pay attention to the sound that we have here there is no thunder on the board but the sound is being heard we do a little adjustment and then it works properly as there is no feedback synchronization. That's the direct translation, what he says. One more time, start of the device. And he's experiencing a little bit problem with what he calls feedback. For some reason now we don't have that sound that we had before. So it would be good to think what is the origin of that sound and what is the sounder. Usually, in Lithuania experiment, that was a ferrite that was 
getting into the oscillation, mechanical oscillation, and that's why we heard the tone. But the power in here is too little, too little in level to create mechanical oscillation. That also reminds us ultrasound and the frequency of the ultrasound region. But uh, again, no piezoelectric crystal that could make that sound. So, is it interaction with something else that is making that noise? Good question. When we increase the frequency too much, the generator will stop working. And now I'm going to show you how the generator we are. We do not have self-locking. So just connecting the battery makes it work and disconnecting make it stop. So here you should concentrate on what he did to switch off self-looping of the generator. We also have some additional noises from the room that I was doing uh, work on that video, trying to edit it properly. Uh, so I'm trying to give you as much as I could. Now, Akua is disconnecting major parts of that board and trying to prove that the device is legit. And of course, when he unwind the windings on the transformer, you would be able to see which way it was winded, how many winds were there, and what was the secret in between those two halves of the ferrite. Now the ferrite by itself is made of the tiny, tiny, tiny powder that is mixed with a binding compound and then put on press to have a shape of the ferrite. So each one of those tiny, tiny particles behave as the independent magnetic dipole. And the resistance of that structure is extremely high. That's why this thing doesn't keep steady magnetic flux. And once you take out the magnetic component of electromagnetic wave or whatever the electromagnetic field you have there, each of the domains, those tiny, tiny particles, will go its own way. So this thing doesn't hold magnetism. Some of the ferrite properties would be uh, permeability. Permeability of air is one, and permeability of ferrite could be 300, 500, 5,000, 10,000, and more. The typical temperature of operation is not more than 80 to 100 degrees of Fahrenheit, but even this frequency, ferrite is keeping its properties. But actually, it is a Fe203, usually, which would be homogeneous ceramic structure uh, that is a mix of iron oxide with carbonates. That would be oxide carbonates, uh, zinc, nickel, and magnesium. The magic ferrite made by uh, Russian, actually Lithuanian, for Rubin Russian TV that was in a yoke had a special properties and I have right now EDXRF and I'm trying to find out more about it. For some of you guys, if you have original ferrite from Rubin, I would appreciate if you let me know. That is of course related to Lithuania experiment. You can Google for Lithuania experiment, you're gonna find out a lot about it. Now we have interesting situation. You see those two pieces of paper. Those were from one side of two halves and the transformer was working at the flyback mode. Both inductors of and flyback transformers. All members of say power inductor family. They all function by taking energy from the electrical circuit. They store it in a magnetic field and subsequently return this energy, minus losses of course, to the circuit. So the flyback transformer is actually a multi-winding coupled inductor. It is unlike the true transformer, which has a closed magnetic flux. So the AD current could fly. In other words, this design 
whenever you put something in the middle of the halves, you're allowing transformer to store the energy. This is one of the products based on isolated flyback LED power controller that was developed to um, support track dimming and uh, high PFC and um, fewer external parts by achieving active PFC with a single converter and didn't have any use for optocouplers and detectors for average LED current control of the second side of the transformer and that was in Japan quite a time ago uh, the article was dated originally in 2001 then it was repeated in 2013 so it looks like uh, they're working on it as well but anyhow there's a big achievement of Akua presenting us the device which clearly show that there is nothing in it there and you see elements being ripped apart and those elements are capacitors but I'm much closer to Lithuanian experiment and uh, my experiment with Gillipsy and Coleman which is uh, showing quite different principles what is puzzling me is the rapid change of a course approach from one kilowatt device to a few watts concept and why is that happening? It may be possible because he wants to file the pattern braids for the first device and he's not sure yet what is causing the phenomena. I wish him the best. Spasiya Bashoya Akua and Spasiya Bashoya Druzia. I spoke to him quite a few times and I was trying to understand where he's coming from. But obviously he's emotional and I hope that will benefit all of us. And we expect this year some major development. I don't want to talk too much about it, but let's see. Have a good one.